43, I had a question coming out of chapter 7, number 83. And I'm going to explain this lovely looking yellow note in a bit. But let's let's read the question, get the setup, and then talk about this. So it says, the cost of unleaded gas in the Bay Area was following an unknown distribution. All right, I don't know the shape, but it said the mean was $4.59. And then the standard deviation was a dime. All right, so again, this is the population distribution, which is great. All right, I don't know its shape, but I do know the mean and standard deviation. And then I see that I took a sample of 16 gas stations. All right, and as soon as I see that I took a sample of 16 gas stations, I should be thinking about a sampling distribution. And in terms of the sampling distribution, if you wanna go, well, am I looking at an X bar or a P prime? Well, if we look at our variable, and our variable, and I'll write it up here, was the um, price of gas, that is a numerical variable. Right? And whenever you're looking at numerical variables, and it has units, it's in dollars, um, when you have a numerical variable and you're looking at sampling distributions, you're going to go to X bars. All right. If it was um, categorical, you would go to P prime. So I want to figure out what's the deal with X bar. So let me go ahead and write our, our population distribution over here again. And then let me go build our sampling distribution. So if I go to X bar, I would keep the mean but the standard error becomes my population distribution, oh, excuse me, my population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, right? And then the big question comes is, can I put the n here, right? So let me put right now, can I put an n there? So there are two ways to assess whether you can put an n there. It's either that the population distribution is normal or that your sample size is 30 or higher. So if we look at this, my population distribution, if I go, let me color code this, my population distribution, it was not stated to be normal, right? I don't have that. They told me it was unknown. When I look at my sample size, my sample size was 16. That is not larger than 30. So I do not have either of those options. So I would have to leave this as a question mark. And what that would ultimately mean is I can't answer the question that's being asked of us because they're asking you, what's the probability that X bar is greater than 4.69? And that's what this whole thing is talking about, that your book doesn't have an answer in, well, I guess technically if I look at it, it would be unknown. Maybe your book does have an answer, huh? Oh, I know why I put this. Your book, JK, got it. I think the answer, as I'm looking at this, I, I would say the answer is D. I just forgot. Now your book, if you look at the back of the book, if you look at the key, they say the answer is A, and that's where I disagree with it. I think the um, answer is unknown because the calculation can't be made. You don't have the ability to use normal CDF because we don't know that the sampling distribution is approximately normal. But if we did, all right, so if we take that leap, just for the sake of running mechanics, if they ask you there, what's the prob uh, approximate probability that the average price for gas is greater than um, 469. The thing I want you to hear is that they asked about the average gas price. So if they ask you about the average gas price, you got to go with the standard or the sampling distributions numbers. So if there had been an N here, which again, I disagree with, there's not, I would have gone normal CDF, low, high, mean, standard error, and I would have gotten this number of 0 0.0003, which is almost zero. All right, but like I said, I, I don't, I, I, I would argue that the answer is D, that the probability is unknown. And I actually, I see that I put that there. Great. All right. So that's, that's number 83. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.